Ladies and gentlemen, this for Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be doing a bit of a tech roundup concerning both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. There have been a couple of interviews which do highlight some of the differences between the two consoles, including what their strengths and weaknesses are. So we're just going to be throwing them all into one video. We're going to be starting out with the guys behind Game Biro. Um, in case you're not too familiar with Game Biro, it is indeed the very popular actually at one point not quite so much now but it is making a bit of a comeback but the engine was used in for example oblivion bully and so on and so on and it's actually created by and maintained and developed by a company known as Gamebase. so brian towalski um who is the marketing director at the company decided to speak a little bit about this as well as uh, i'm probably gonna completely butcher this name but still yunj hoang um, he is one of the lead engine engineers as well. And um, they began by saying Game Biro implementations on each platform are written in a way to maximally utilize underlying hardware. Developers won't need to take different code paths because the API encapsulates the different hardware capabilities. For example, on the PS4, Game Biro will try to reduce the deep copies between the GPU and CPU wherever possible. On And on the Xbox One, it will put some of the frequently accessed GPU resources on the ESRAM according to the access pattern. So, I did, by the way, that is pretty much a verbatim quote. I just removed lots of mentions of Game Biro within the same sentence because it was kind of getting uh, a bit boring to read. But regardless, um, so most of this obviously is taking just a quick bit of analysis on the PS4. This is taking care of the unified, taking advantage, I say, of the unified memory and uh, memory architecture of the PS4, obviously. Because you have quite a coherent memory structure, HUMA, that's H-U-M-A. If you need more information, you can search for it on the channel. Um, obviously, in those cases, there's less copying of the GPU and the CPU data, particularly when you're dealing with compute. And, of course, with the ESRAM, some of the frequently accessed GPU resource code is always being used on the ESRAM anyway, because it is, of course, considerably faster to access than, say, the DDR3. Next, we have a few quotes from NavPower. You might not have heard of these guys, but it is a middleware. So, in other words, it's not, you know, the core game engine. It kind of sits on top of that, if you will. And this is for dynamic obstacle avoidance and streaming and video games and so on. Um, and that's actually pretty damn important. Of course, pathfinding and all of this stuff is extremely important when it comes to NPCs. So, one of the questions was asked um, by Gaming Bolt. Nav power is essentially a CPU-based process. Granted, the PS4 and Xbox One have eight cores, but does their slower clock speed pose a new challenge to automatically generate nav mesh for the walkable surface? Actually, to be fair, he's actually slightly wrong on that. Yes, they do have eight cores. However, only six are available for game developers, and that's been confirmed by pretty much every developer under the sun. So I wish the interviewer had gotten that right, but still. Anyway, David Miles' response to this. Actually, the performance of the new machines has been quite good, and there's also a lot of memory available, which is great. Now, power runtime typically uses just a few megabytes, but once you start building nav graphs at run uh, runtime they increase memory requirements significantly even more than the cpu that's why nav graphs are traditionally built offline um that he also adds in regards to the specific another point that he did make as well was that he said that even though the memory bandwidth from both the ps4 and xbox one is fabulous the critical thing for us is the machines feature very modern processor designs which include features such as out of order execution. That's critical for anyone writing pathfinding or AI systems because it's so rare to be able to execute any significant portion of code without having to make a decision based on the data you're traversing and conditionally go off to an executable on a different piece of code. So having the fastest memory in the world is going to be useful when the processor stalls and you branch to another part of code. Um, you you guys might not be too familiar with what that means. I have done a huge amount of information on this when I discussed both the PS3's cell processor. So you could either search for CISC, that's um, or RISC, that would be R I S C or C I S C on the channel, or you could also search for PS3 post mortem on the channel, and there'll be a lot of information on what it basically means. However, to give you an overview, um, Basically, all he's referring to here is 
uh, the CPU's ability to make good decisions based on the code. When it comes to AI in particular, because there's so many different random factors, for example, do you shoot at the enemy now or do you shoot at them in, say, a second time, uh, one second's time? And obviously there's so many different particular branches of code and a lot of code effectively is if or or. Um, and obviously in a lot of cases there can be a lot more than, say, one or two or three different outcomes of things. And all of this is basically decision-making process. It's actually quite interesting because while it can be very good for code which is, how can I put it, chaotic, for example, AI, in other cases it can be a little bit of a challenge technically to get good performance. Naughty Dog actually mentioned this when they were coding for The Last of Us, remastered of course on the PS4. They said that in a way it's actually much harder to um, optimize the performance for the in for an out of order processor compared to say the ps3 cell because it is in effect in order so it'll always execute things as the code kind of flows anyway um moving on what about direct x12 uh david once again says obviously this is great for us because it frees up a lot of cpu resources it could be used for a variety of different things including ai most clients only allocate a few percent of the total uh, CPU advance, uh, uh, CPU available for AI processing, including things such as dynamic obstacles, pathfinding, and character steering. So, that's actually a very important part, and I want to kind of expand on that. With DX12, we know that, yes, CPU overhead is going to be reduced quite significantly, and that's great, but this is actually an issue with games right now. Um, AI you know, it, it's getting better, but quite honestly, I think eventually a lot of it is going to be transferred to the GPU, maybe for compute. You know, that's something that both NVIDIA, AMD, and pretty much all of them um, who make GPUs have been stating for a while that would be a really good idea to do because it could be extremely expensive. The only problem is you do get a little bit of latency when you're sending those jobs over, particularly when you are, say, locking the data and so on, and sometimes it can be a little bit cheaper, or not so much cheaper, but it can be faster to actually just execute certain pieces of code on the CPU. So there's, I think there's going to be a little bit of um, work regarding that in the future. Anyway, um, anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and found something interesting anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention, guys, just in case you're not regular Facebook lovers. Um, got ourselves an Xbox One, so we'll be going with that in the next few days. We've, of course, got the PS4 already, so it'll make graphics comparisons a hell of a lot easier. This is actually one of the reasons we've been a little bit quiet on the channel um, recently. We've been kind of doing some stuff in the background um, for some major changes that we'll discuss with you pretty soon, actually, certainly within the next week or so. Anyway, that'll be in like a vloggy type of situation. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.